Reflection. What's, what's this one? Extension. What's this one? Uh, abduction. Adduction. External rotation. Internal rotation. Horizontal. Add. Adduction, horizontal, abduction. So I got a bunch of these, right? So we're going to do flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, external rotation, internal rotation, horizontal abduction, or adduction, horizontal abduction. All right. I would like the shoulder to be kind of in the plane with the rest of her body, and it's sitting up here in this pillow, so that's not all that exciting for me. So I'm going to want to move this all the way out of the way. If she would tolerate <laughs> not even having a pillow, that might even be better. Okay? With my shoulder, again, I need to think about stabilizing the shoulder, and I need to think about not crossing multiple joints. I don't want to do this. Okay, I'm she's not going to feel comfortable. In front of you. And, you know, her elbows start moving, and I don't know what's really going on at the shoulder. Right? So, I'm going to hold and support her whole arm so she'll relax. All right, and then I can come all the way up here. And all the way back down. I need to be supporting underneath the direction gravity is going both sides. So, it's, it's a little bit of a. My hands underneath her here to support her with gravity. Once I hit there, I gotta switch my support so that it's over there to support it. Come on, that's gravity. Okay. This is gonna feel awkward at first until you can figure out where you need to have your hands. And depending on the size of the person's arm and that their weight and everything else, it may change where your hand positioning is. I can do it this way. I can do it this way. You're just going to have to play with it a little bit. My hand position changes sometimes when I'm on the other side. It just depends. All right, so flexion. Extension. Extensions here. In your book, it actually calls anything beyond there hyperextension. I am not used to that. I'm used to calling it extension when it gets past there. I honestly, just in the clinic, I very rarely have to go and extend someone that way unless they've had some sort of surgery or injury. You know, sometimes, you know, that, that person needs that motion to get back there. You know, women doing their bras. And, you know, I just tell them, do it in the front, swing around. You don't have to reach back there. <laughs> But there will be times when you do have to, but that's usually in an orthopedic clinic. If you're stretching a person that's comatose or hemiplegic and stuff, most of the time, that's going to be enough. Okay? Abduction. This is one of the things you've absolutely got to remember. When I'm abducting your shoulder, you know, this guy, this supraspinatus, sits right here, and that little tendon runs right through there. And it comes down and it grabs my arm and it helps stabilize my shoulder and want to dislocate. What keeps my shoulder from just falling out of the socket? My deltoid holds it up there, my rotator cuff holds it up there. Okay? Everybody stand and put their arms down at their side and put your thumbs towards your hips. Alright, now stand up as straight as you can and now raise your pinkies to the ceiling. How far do you go? Has anybody got their hands directly over there? All right, now everybody turn your thumb to the ceiling. Okay. What's happening? I am rotating this big tubercle out of the way. Okay. All right, here's his thumb. If I leave my thumb down here, bam, bam, bam. I'm going to impinge my shoulder. I'm going to mess up my rotator cuff. Okay, because there's muscles going between that space, and I'm going to impinge them. You hear about impingement syndrome sometimes. I impinged my shoulder really bad playing softball and realized I was too old to be playing softball. So, when I do abduction, I must rotate that thumb so that it is going towards, if the person was in an anatomical position up over their head, thumb to the ceiling. 
So when she's laying down here, I've got to have her palm up and thumb this way to get that range of motion. Okay? I've got to be up there. All the way to there. You will, I will see you guys doing it this way. It hurts, <laughs> doesn't it? When it's there, it hurts you. Okay, and that's why in lecture I said if your patient cannot give you verbal feedback or eye feedback or something, you don't stretch a, sh a shoulder that can't move itself actively beyond 90 degrees. This is, the shoulder is dysfunctional, the person can't give you feedback, I stay below 90 degrees because I could really impinge that shoulder. And I probably told you the story on, in lecture of me impinging some guy's shoulder really bad. And wife said, I hadn't, Bob hadn't moved his shoulder like that in 30 years. Well, thanks for telling me after I'd done it. Um, it drove the point home to me a little bit. So if she can participate, then I can do, but I will do abduction and flexion 290 degrees if they can't cooperate. But the actual motion in my shoulder, I get all this extra motion because it's muscular, not ligamentous. And so if you're not actively moving the joints and everything out of the way with your muscles and approximating it just right, you're running the risk as a clinician of hurting their shoulder. So thumb is always up when I do abduction. I like to keep the thumb up when I do flexion. I got her thumb up and going in. It's just not going to be as comfortable for trying to do it. That's not the end all usually. All right. So flexion, abduction. When I do internal and external rotation, I'm going to usually start right here at 90 degrees to her body. And then I'm going to bring her down. I'm watching her shoulder because I could make it go down further. What's happening now? Her scapula is just rotating this way. So I might even need to support it a little bit. That's really all the motion she has in internal rotation there. If I stabilize her scapula, if I don't stabilize her scapula and I don't care what's going on there, I can bring it all the way down here. Is that helping her? Probably not. I'm just stretching out. External rotation is the same way. Now it's not going to move around as much there. So. External. Internal. If I'm really trying to gain some range or there's a dysfunction there, I might need to stabilize that with my hand to really get that range. Okay, if I'm going to do horizontal adduction or back sharp. Adduction. I'm having to like rotate my hand over her to be supporting. I got support, support, support. Then when I get to midline, I got to support from the other side. It's going to be awkward. I'll probably make it look easier than you're going to feel that it is. <laughs> okay. So horizontal add and adduction. I said it backwards. I do really know the difference. Add, add. Internal, external. Abduction, adduction, flexion. Extension. Did I hit them all? I think so. All right. Good stretch and shoulders. <laughs>